Hello everyone, this is Andrew. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about renovating for the most profit. Now when you walk into a house, and if you're an investor, you probably bought something that needs a lot of work. And this is exactly what you want. Now where to put your money is the big question. It can be very overwhelming to look around and see that this entire house needs work, or maybe just a few areas need work. So here's some of the best areas to put your money. So obviously we all know kitchens and bathrooms are a big attraction for selling a house or for renting a house. You walk in, you see a beautiful kitchen, and you fall in love. Uh, more so than a bedroom or a living room or anything like that. So some tips with kitchens is you can easily refinish the, the cabinets, the, the cupboard doors. Uh, painting can, can go a long way and really change the entire feel of a kitchen, and that is probably your most cost-effective measure. Now another thing that you can do is buy prefabricated uh, cabinets from Home Depot or Lowe's. This is ease of installation. The cabinets are usually around 200 to 250 uh, depending on the configuration. Usually you're going to find that there's about uh, maybe five different scenarios. You got uppers of different sizes and lowers of different sizes and with drawers. But I'll tell you if, if you're going to be, if you want to do a, a quick turnaround, this is a nice combination of reasonably priced plus uh, speed of installation because putting together um, kitchen cabinets from a, like a collapsed form can, I mean, you're adding hours and hours just right there. Now you can get a custom kitchen, but basically for an average, I don't know, 10 by 10 kitchen, you're looking at about, you know, $2,000 for uh, out of the box. A kitchen if you get a custom kitchen by a cabinet maker that's going to run you about five thousand dollars and for a rental is completely unnecessary um, again I'm gonna I'm gonna stress that the, the refinishing the cabinet doors can be your best bet so consider all those options and then um, depending on the neighborhood and the, and the house the price point that you're at you know you can make a decision of whether or not the money is well placed bathrooms of course um, most bathrooms um, in the last 30 or so, 40 years, they're going to be white on, uh, you know, white toilet and white um, tub or a surround. So you can just leave that. If you're pre-dating and you're getting the pink and the blue toilets and tubs, toilets, you're just going to replace it a couple of hundred bucks, simple and easy. A bathtub, you can, you can um, reglaze the bathtub, which is basically where they just turn it into white. Now, the one thing I would caution is I've heard, I haven't experienced it myself, but I've heard that that has a lifespan of maybe three to five years. Um, you might not care depending on how long you're holding the property or if you're flipping it. Um, some other great options to say you, you have a, a tile surround on a, a, a shower enclosure or about bathtub enclosure that's a very dated tile. Uh, the vinyl uh, tub surrounds that just, um, they have sort of a middle panel, corner panels and end panels. You can just put those up, they, they uh, glue onto the walls and it's going to give a nice fresh look. If you want to go real extreme, you can tear out the tiles and, and, and re-drywall re it and, and uh, put fresh new tiles. If you're going for sort of a marble look or some sort of accent piece where you have like a, a feature tile, then that's going to be the way to go. And again, this is depending on the price point of the property and what you expect to get out of it. Um, of course, the, the basic thing that you should always do in the kitchen, in the bathroom, is always replace, not always, I mean, if, if the, the taps and the cabinet poles and everything are fine, but generally speaking, the places that investors are buying are very dated. So you're going to want to replace the cabinet poles, the... Um, the taps uh, and all, all the fixtures, shower heads, all those sort of things. It's, it's a very easy fix. I will add lighting. Lighting can make a big difference too. If you have a beautiful new, once you're all said and done and you've renovated this house and you have dated fixtures, that's going to really catch your eye and it's going to be um, not necessarily a make or break, but it's going to ruin the overall effect. So I would recommend just going and getting even just some cheap, cheap fixtures from Home Depot LED. You can usually get under 20 bucks for one, uh, depending, sometimes you can get a deal and you actually get two, a contractor pack for, for 20 bucks. So that's a real bang for your buck there. Uh, curb appeal. Curb appeal doesn't necessarily increase the value of the house. So for example, an appraiser, 
isn't going to say like, well, you've got a nice cut lawn with a, a nice garden and that makes this house more valuable. But curb appeal is very important because first impressions are very important. So when you walk up to a property and you already have a feeling that, you know, it's, it sort of just feels a bit not taken care of or, or, or dated or um, over, you know, unkempt, then that sort of resonates as they're going through the rest of the place. Although, the, you know, there's very much metrics that they're, they're checking off, but if they walk in and they think that this is nicely fr uh, freshly painted deck with some shrubs or some mulch in the garden, it doesn't take a lot, maybe 500 bucks just to spruce up the front yard. It's going to go a long way for first impressions. Now, flooring is probably one of the number one things that investors uh, do it in a, in a house renovation. It's very easy to just, whatever the floor looks like, it doesn't matter, throw some laminate flooring over top or some, uh, some luxury vinyl plank over the top, and that is really gonna change the feel of the entire house. So you can modernize the house very quickly. It's not cheap. Um, no matter what you do with flooring, if you were to refinish hardwood, it's still gonna be a few thousand dollars. A vinyl a luxury plank is probably the best option for a rental unit because it's got the longevity, it's going to last the test of time, it's got the durability, and it's got waterproofing. Um, it's not waterproof, but water resistant. Laminate would be fine for a uh, flip scenario if you, you just want to change the feel and it's going to be half the price. Painting, of course, painting is number one, hands down. I can't even almost... I've never been in a property where I wasn't going to paint. Even if it's um, a reasonably good paint job, a lot of the time we run into houses where you've got a personal choice that the previous homeowner had made, a red wall, a brown wall, a green wall, a yellow wall, kids' rooms, you know, they do some funny things in there. So generally speaking, painting is probably your number one thing that you're going to want to do. And pick a nice uh, neutral color that is going to uh, appeal to pretty much anybody that walks into that place. You know, think, um, I don't know, doctor's office or something, but not so uh, utilitarian, hopefully. Um, and then moving up the ladder, there's uh, the idea of open concept. Now, you might not be in a situation where you're going to be tearing down walls, but if you're in a property that um, you can do an open concept, I would recommend that. It's, it's definitely the new thing. People want bright, open spaces that's going to generally run you a little bit more money. You might need building permits. You might even run into walls that are load bearing and you can't do it. Sometimes a little cutout in a wall uh, between a kitchen and a uh, living room, when you put a little uh, breakfast bar on there, can, can just make the space feel uh, much larger, um, potentially much larger than it actually is. And then there's a few little things that may be obvious, but like dishwashers and uh, in-suite laundry, Generally, if it's a single family house, most people are going to assume that there's a dishwasher and a laundry facility, but that's not always the case. Um, in fact, at least half of the houses I go in don't have dishwashers or laundry facilities. So, and, and I'm doing rental properties. So I would recommend that if you can fit a laundry facility, laundry closet, it doesn't have to be a laundry room. It can, it can literally just be a closet with a, with a double stacked um, washer and dryer in it and um, try to stick in a dishwasher. Anyway, these are just some quick tips um, of where to put your money. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please uh, like my video and subscribe. And if you wanna reach out to me, I'm at Andrew Cox REI on all social media platforms. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care. Bye for now.